Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Mechanics C. Today, I'm going to talk about another example of how to use Newton's laws to solve problems. In this particular problem, we're talking about air resistance. This question is from AP exam from 2010 C1. Students are to conduct an experiment to investigate the relationship between the terminal speed of a stack of folding paper coffee filter and its mass. The procedure involves stacking a number of coffee filters, like the one shown in the figure, and dropping the stacks from the rest. The students change the number of filters in the stack to vary the mass m while keeping the shape of the stack the same. As the stack of coffee filters falls, there is an air resistance or drag force acting on the filters. Students suspect that a drag force FD is proportional to the square of the speed V, such as FD equals to C times V squared, where C is constant. Using this relationship, derive an expression relating the terminal speed VT to the mass M. So this is uh, falling with air resistance. First, let's do a uh, Think about at a terminal velocity. At a terminal velocity, that means the definition of terminal velocity is velocity is constant. Uh, at that time, that means acceleration equals to zero. That means net force equals to zero. Here is a free that a free body diagram of the coffee filters at a terminal velocity. You have upward drag force at terminal velocity is c times v t squared. And you also have downward uh, gravity. This two force has to be the same because net force equals to zero. So from here, we can relate Vt to m through this relationship. Vt squared equals mg over c. The student conducts the experiment obtaining the folding data. So you measure the mass and you measure terminal velocity. Assuming the functional relationship, for the drag force above, use the grid below to plot a linear graph as a function of m to verify the relationship. So use the empty boxes in the data table as appropriate to record any calculated values you are graphing. Label the vertical axis as appropriate and place numbers on both axes. So let's take a look at the relationship we derived the last time. That's vt squared equals mg over c. So from here, in order to graph a linear relationship, the vertical has to be vt squared. This has to be vt squared because that will give us the slope equals g over c, which is should be a straight line. So since vertical is vt squared, we need to fill in the data table as vt squared. Simply square the vt to get vt squared value. So those are the values. Now we need to label, uh, we need to put the numbers on the va on the axis. So on the v, you start from 0.26 to 1.12. So graph it evenly to make it as large as possible. This, this is the way to graph it. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 1.8, 1.0 and 1.2. In the x-axis, remember this mass has 10 to the negative 3, so we need to multiply this mg times 10 to the negative 3, and the mass is from 1.12 to 5.10, so this is the most efficient way to graph it. So now we have uh, both scales in the vertical and the horizontal, we basically just plotting the, the data table. When you're plotting the data table, when you're plotting this data on the graph, one thing is important. You need to make your data small. You can't have a big data, like a big circle. I think you will get your points deducted if you do that, okay? Make the points not too big. Then, this, since this is a linear graph, you need to draw a straight line. So again, for the best fit line, you really need this line to be close to all the points. So some points are on above the line and some points are below the line. Okay. So next part is use your graph to calculate C. How do we calculate C using this graph? One way is just to pick a point on the line. 
choose a point but that point has to be on the line so i've chosen this point because this is the data point i know exactly where it is that's the first point and it's on my graph so you plug everything in there so in this case vt squared is 0.26 and that equals mg over c. m is 1.12 times 10 to the negative 3. g is 9.8 and divide by c. So from this equation, I can figure out what c is. And also, this is an easier way to figure out the units. You can simplify, cancel out m and s squared. So you, you know c should be just kilograms divided by meters, 0.042. So again, this C value has a range, accepted range, because this C value really depends on your graph. Another way to figure out a C value is to use the slope. To find a, to use the slope, take a look at this relationship, because V squared, VT squared equals G over C times M, so the slope is really G over C. So G over C is the slope, is the change in VT squared over change in mass. Now to find a slope, we must use two data points. So I choose the data points has to be on the line. So I choose even though this point is not our data point, but it's on the line and it's easier for me to, to determine that point. So I choose that point and original point I chose. So my slope is 0.9. So that's the vertical axis, 0 0.9, uh, minus 0 0.26, that's my original one, divided by the horizontal, I have 0.42, minus 1.12. So I have my slope is 208 meters squared divided by second squared times kilograms. Pay attention to your units. This is definitely, will cause your points if you don't put the units uh, down. From the slope, that's not what we're asking for, not they are asking for. They are asking for the value of C. C equals G divided by slope. So you have to plug in the G and slope. This way, I have the value 0 0.047. As you can see, from even from the same graph for different ways, you can have two different values. The reason for that is because this point, uh, to me, it seems to be 0.9 and 4.2 but maybe it's a little bit off so it's okay that's why the answer you a range of answers is are accepted because of the graph because of uncertainty in reading the values next part sketch an appropriate graph of speed versus time from the time the filters are released up to the time t equals to big t that the filters have fallen the distance y indicate time t equals to big t and the terminal velocity v equals vt on the graph so we know vt is the highest value the filters can reach because that is the terminal velocity so you need to have a horizontal line and your graph should be a curved line approaching to vt as it approaches to vt that is your time t Suppose you had a graph like the one sketched in here and had a numerical scale on each axis. Describe how you could use the graph to approximate the distance y. So in the VT graph, the area under this graph is y. So to determine appropriate distance y, one need to find area under VT graph from t equals to 0 to t equals to t. So this area is the distance. Last part, determine an expression for the approximate amount of mechanical energy dissipated, delta E, due to air resistance during the time the stack falls the distance, little y, where little y is greater than big Y. Express your answer in terms of a little y, m, v, t, and the fundamental constants. So let's take a look. Here is our situation. The filter falls. Filter falls. Uh, since little y is bigger than big Y, so your speed is uh, terminal velocity. So you, you originally, your um, energy is mg times delta y. If you have this point to be zero, uh, so before you start, you have zero velocity. So E i equals mg delta y. At the end, your E f equals one half m v t squared. Delta E is just change energy. Is your E f minus E i? That equals one half mvt squared minus mgy. So that's it. Thanks for watching.